Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. The Spirit of New England, WBZ Group, W. Westinghouse Broadcasting in Boston. Two five four five six seven eight. Hello, America. This is Jerry Williams here on the ten to midnight ride on WBZ Radio. A little late tonight because of the BC game. Boston College eighty-eight, uh, Louisville thirty-three, eighty-three rather, eighty-eight, eighty-three. And we're going to be taking calls, comments, ideas, and opinions from now until midnight tonight. Regular programming as per usual. So if you have something you want to discuss, an opinion you'd like to give, something you'd like to argue about or debate about, fine. Phone number 2545678. That's 2545678 here on WBC Radio. The Spirit of 103. The area code is 617 in case you're calling from outside our area code zone. Let's take a look at what's happening. Boston Evening Globe headlines before we get underway. GI's launch drive to protect Saigon. 10,000 Yanks attack uh, to pin down Reds. 38 racehorses perish in Lake and Downs fire. Fantastic. Nixon, Kosigan ask N, N ban on seabed. Hopeful sign. Sinking Venice looks to MIT. Slain officer born. Suspect faces court. State workers set strike deadline. Medicaid costs, faults hit in taxpayer study. Priests unite to deal with local issues. If Roman Catholic priests unite to deal with the problems confronting their communities, they can be more effective than if they work simply on the parish level. If this is a belief, if, if it is this belief which is prompting priests from six dioceses to meet in New York, March 30th and 31st to organize such local association throughout the United States. That's all right. I think it might be back on the amplifier. Somebody's been fooling with it back there, all right? It's low and has too much bass in it, okay? Is there an, there's an amplifier over here. I have a little problem with my headset tonight, so we, um, if you hear me mumbling on the side, that there's no bearing on you at home. We want you to stay with us tonight at 2545678 at midnight. I turn things over to Larry Glick. And he'll, oh, Larry's not going to be on tonight. Larry is uh, taking the night off because he worked this afternoon for Ron Landry. Ron's on vacation. And so, uh, is it be Jim Sands or Bill Garcia? Or uh, Steve Smith. Stephen Smith is going to be with us tonight at midnight, filling in for Larry Glick, who is filling in for Ron Landry, who is filling in for Jerry Stevens, who was not feeling well because Jerry Stevens had a little problem with Ron Landry, and Ron Landry took off. So Jerry was filling in, but he got a little sore throat. So Larry came in, they woke him up in the middle of the morning, which is the middle of the night, actually, which is the afternoon to Larry Glick because he works all night. And that whole thing became a big mishmash, and I'm glad they didn't call me. Whew. Okay. No good. Two five four five six seven eight. our number. Let's start with telephone call number one on WBZ Radio. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Jerry. Yes. Well, the, the... Oh, that's very clever. I want to thank you for your calling, and it's a pleasure to hear the musical beep tones of New England Bell Telephone Company. And that's the prettiest music I've heard from Bell Tell in a long time. Thanks, Ma. Ma Bell and the orchestra. Hello. Jerry. Listen, must you be so crisp? <laughs> Hi. You, what do you got going in the back? Oh, uh, it's the TV. Want me to turn it down? Well, I mean, I hear martial music. Right, sure when, I, when martial music comes, I start to get uptight when I march. Of course you do. Listen, Jerry, I got a little complaint. And I wonder, I, I don't know, you've probably talked about it before, I don't know. But I haven't heard you talk about it before. Uh, have you ever driven on the road that starts at Cleveland Circle up to the Newton Line on Beacon Street? Let me tell you this. What? I have driven... On that street. A million times. So often. And I'm so mad. Up. I'm glad you called. Hey, I, Jerry, I, I al- am glad you called. I almost broke my axle last night. I got a Volkswagen. It's a 59, and I drive on that with my brother Tommy all the time, and I'm telling you. Listen, are you listening? Yes. Please, let's do something about it. My normal route coming into WBZ. Right. I think it's in there. Have you got something turned down in there that is not... 
that uh, I'm having a little technical problem oh, here see. with my headset. I hear you fairly well, but I don't hear me. Oh. <laughs> see, I don't. I hear... can hear you fine. No, no, we're, you, you and I are communicating. It's all right on the air. It's a problem in, in my communicating with myself, so I can uh, better attempt to do the program without shouting. I see. Uh, is something on that, that side of the board there that brings my volume up for some reason? I don't know what 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 that is. Yeah. Or is it my microphone that's up too close? All right. Nevertheless. I come in generally that route. It's getting yeah. better. It's getting better. I come in via uh, Brookline, uh, Route 9, Chestnut Hill Avenue, across Cleveland Circle. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Across Beacon Street. You know right. where the Cleveland Circle Theater is, where the Circle Theater yeah, is? Yeah, right there, yeah. It's an abomination. It seems like it got hit in World War II and they just haven't fixed it yet. It's an abomination. The city of Boston ought to be ashamed. That's only one spot. And, and Jerry, when... When you hit the Newton line right at BC, you know, right at, right at Robert Center, it gets a little better. You Incredible. Know? Yeah. Going up Commonwealth Avenue on that, uh, toward Boston College. Yeah. And, is, uh, is, is just a, a street full of potholes. Right. Do potholes know, Incorporated. Do you, <laughs> do you know where Cardinal Cushing lives? I know where it is, yes, where okay. the Cardinal's house is. How about the inside track that's one way? Have you ever driven on that? Unbelievable. <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. I almost broke my axle, I'm telling you. I know what you mean. What can be done about it, Yeah, Jerry? well, write to Axel, WBZ <laughs> Radio. We'll see if we can't get your axle fixed. <laughs> okay? Thanks for calling in, too. Let me, let me go over that before you get on to the next call. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never been around Cleveland Circle, forget it. There is no way to get through in the morning. Nor is there any way to get through in the evening. It is an incredible roadblock. It is incredible, number one, because the light system at Chestnut Hill Avenue and Cleveland Circle in front of the Circle Theater allows about three or four cars through that maze, that incredible, that's the only word for it, intersection. You're lucky to get through the intersection before the light changes and there's a backup through, through Route 9. It might even be a backup through Brookline and then a backup through Batapan. That's how bad that situation is there. I, uh, if I have to come in in the morning during the rush hour and come across the city in that fashion, I really avoid it. I now go about 12 or 13 miles out of my way via Route 128 to the Mass Turnpike from where I live uh, to try to get into the city to avoid that intersection at Commonwealth Avenue and Chestnut Hill and furthermore the next intersection at Beacon Street. That is unbelievable. Mr. Mayor, if you are listening, do something about it. There are two types of pedestrians at that intersection, the quick and the dead. There's a new game there they play called Who Cares? We All Have Compulsory. It is unbelievable. Not only that, but the streets are such in such bad repair and people are double or triple or quadruple parked. Mr. Mayor, you've got to do something about incredible Cleveland Circle. It is, I wish I had a chorus, incredible, incredible Gilbert and Sullivan. Unbelievable, incredible. Mr. Mayor, don't just sit there, do something or try getting through the intersection at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's incredible, incredible, Mr. Mayor, it is incredible. As a matter of fact, the other night, if anybody wanted to go to the theater to see Joanna at the Circle Theater, not only was it incredible, but you couldn't even get there. There was no way of getting there. I played basketball with a uh, BZ crowd against the Playboy Bunnies. We lost, by the way. I was fouled a couple of times and penalized for squeezing. But uh, it was worth it. We tried after the uh, basketball game to get over to uh, Incredible Cleveland Circle. <laughs> I just gave it up as a bad job. And potholes, Mr. Mayor... We are proud, Mr. Mayor, to say that Boston has the best potholes in America. The best, the biggest, the deepest, the fattest potholes in the world are right here at Cleveland Circle. And if you don't like it, it's incredible, 
incredible. Mr. Mayor, it's incredible. You would think with all the brains, the computers, the electronics, those cats up there are orbiting nine days, walking around in space, going to land on the moon this year, the latest next year, that they could do something about Cleveland Circle. <laughs> They can't do anything. They can't do anything. Would you believe, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nixon, would you believe this? This city can't do anything about Cleveland Circle. It's incredible. Traditional. Is that possible that nobody will hear this voice crying on, in the wilderness on WBZ, the spirit of 103? Mayor White. Mr. Traffic Commissioner. Mr. Police Commissioner, will nobody hear the voice of the abused motorist in this city and do something about Cleveland Circle? And after we finish about Cleveland Circle, we'll work on a few hundred other circles in this city that are incredible, incredible. Oh, dear. I'm glad that kid brought it up. How would you like to fall on your axle? That's what he said. Listen. And now I'm going to break for five, news, five minutes of news seriously, and Big Jim Lightfoot comes in to bring you an incredible editorial. And then we'll return with your calls and comments until midnight. So get with it, or write to Pothole, WBZ, Boston. The spirit of New England. WBZ and WBZ-FM, Group W Westinghouse Broadcasting in Boston. It's 38 degrees in Boston. Tonight's low will be in the 30s. I'm Streeter Stewart reporting the 11 o'clock WBZ News for the new Purity Supreme supermarkets where hundreds and hundreds of their everyday prices are lower than the competition. So your total weekly food bill will be less. Shop Purity Supreme, the anti-inflationary supermarket. Enemy gunners lobbed rockets into military and civilian areas of Da Nang tonight, and the exploding missiles killed at least 10 civilians and wounded 20 others. Four soldiers were wounded. Parts of four American divisions have pulled back from their earlier positions to prepare for a second day of assaults in what is being called perhaps the largest operation of the war. It's taking place near the old Michelin rubber plantation about 30 miles north of Saigon. There was heavy resistance today to the action known as Operation Wedge. The blue waters of the Suez Canal were a quiet contrast to the artillery shells whining from one side to the other as Egyptians and Israelis exchanged gunfire across the waterway. Israel's new premier, Golda Meir, repeated what other Israeli leaders have been saying, that only those who waged the war in the Middle East should make the peace. There are renewed reports of fresh build-ups along the Usuri River between Russia and Red China, and Group W correspondent Ed DeFontaine takes a closer look at the situation. Internal dissension in Russia and China is described as the main reason why both nations have mounted domestic propaganda campaigns following a series of border clashes along the Usuri River. Observers in London say the Chinese started the latest series of battles, probably with the resulting propaganda campaign in mind. The parade through China's cities protesting what China calls Russian aggression might manage to weld a national unity so disrupted by the Cultural Revolution. While the experts agree China started the trouble, they say the Soviets have belatedly developed their own massive internal propaganda campaign for reasons similar to the Chinese. There are signs that the dissension over the way the invasion and occupation of Czechoslovakia have backfired has spread far below the Kremlin leadership in Russia. The Russians might receive increased support for their World Communist Conference, and there could even be a more sympathetic American administration as a byproduct of the battles along the Manchurian Soviet border. However, growing Soviet propaganda appears aimed at domestic unity based on the hate of a common enemy. Ed DeFontaine, London. WBZ News Time, three minutes after 11. It all began a few months ago. A loyal group of activists began a movement to resist the inflationary trends of your food budget. Under the name of Purity Supreme Supermarkets, they began a demonstration against the high cost of eating. It's going on today, six days a week. It's easy to spot the leaders. They wear badges saying, I'm an inflation fighter. They carry signs saying, at Purity Supreme, hundreds and hundreds of our everyday prices are lower than the establishment, the competition. And Purity Supreme has six-day weekend specials. 
Has this anti-inflation movement been successful? We think so. Thousands of people have left the establishment and have taken advantage of the demonstrations. As a result, they're saving several dollars a week, week in, week out, on their food bills. Isn't it time for you to speak out? To strike a blow against inflation? Shop Purity Supreme, the anti-inflationary supermarket. Senator Gaylord Nelson scolded the American Medical Association today for what he called its pitiful effort to tell doctors of the dangers of an antibiotic after accepting thousands of dollars to advertise it. Previous witnesses told the Small Business Monopoly Subcommittee that chloramphenicol, which is also known by the trade name chloromycetin, kills about one out of every 20,000 users by causing a blood disease called aplastic anemia. Senator Nelson said the facts in this case scream very loudly, and he said the acceptance by the AMA of the ads constituted, quote, an outright fraud. A day-long hearing by the Social Welfare Committee of the Massachusetts Board heard testimony that the problem of drug use in the Commonwealth had reached the epidemic stage and requires wholesale changes in the treatment of addicts. The hearing will continue Thursday. The medical director of the Massachusetts Red Cross has asked the legislature to lower the minimum age of blood donors to 18 to help increase the blood supply to hospitals. Dr. Alan Kleiman said the blood shortages are chronic and that the need is rising. Terry Driscoll scored 29 points, including two key baskets in the final minute to pace Boston College to a hard-fought 88-83 victory over Louisville in the National Invitation Tournament in New York City tonight. The Eagles from Chestnut Hill take on Army Thursday night in a semifinal game of the tournament played in New York's Madison Square Garden. Army reached the semifinals with a 59-45 win over South Carolina. And at Hutchinson, Kansas, Jeff Halliburton's jumper in the final seconds gave number one ranked San Jacinto State of Pasadena, Texas, a 72 to 70 chiller over Johnson Wales of Providence, Rhode Island tonight in a first round game of the National Junior College Basketball Tournament there. The weather word for Boston and vicinity tonight, fair, lowest temperatures in the middle and upper 30s, gentle variable winds. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, highest temperatures in the low 50s inland, the middle 40s along the coast. Present temperature, 38 degrees. The top story of the hour, the communists blast a volley of rockets into Da Nang, killing 10 and wounding at least 20, while American sources recoup for a second attack tomorrow in Operation Wedge. And that's the 11 o'clock WBZ report with portions recorded, brought to you by the new Purity Supreme supermarkets where hundreds and hundreds of their everyday prices are lower than the competition. So your total weekly food bill will be less. Shop Purity Supreme, the anti-inflationary supermarket. I'm Streeter Stewart. We now present Jim Lightfoot, general manager of WBZ, with an editorial entitled, A New Approach. If response to our editorials is any guide, people are finally facing up to the alcoholism problem. That's a good omen for the proposed state treatment program, House Bill 1506. But we emphasize again that eventual control of the disease must depend on prevention and education, especially for young people. Over the past 80 years, every state in the country has passed a law making education on alcoholism compulsory in the schools. For the most part, though, the actual teaching has been negative and ineffective. The emphasis has been on the evils of drinking, the pitch has been for total abstinence. We recognize there are responsible people who hold this temperance viewpoint, but as a general approach, it just doesn't jibe with what young people see around them. Roughly two-thirds of America's adults, their parents included, drink. The majority do so without any ill effects. We recall a good analogy on this in a study by the National Institute of Mental Health. It's as if driver education classes in schools were only concerned with the gorier aspects of speeding and reckless driving. This might frighten a few students, but it wouldn't produce many young people capable of handling an auto safely. With the emphasis placed solely on alcoholism, alcohol education may similarly frighten a few students, but it doesn't produce many who know about drinking or how to handle alcohol safely. The emphasis for the future must be on education for safe drinking. This has been a WBZ editorial presented by our general manager, Jim Lightfoot. WBZ welcomes comments on its editorials and recognizes its obligation to present opposing points of view from responsible spokesmen. Two five four five six seven eight 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 two five four five six seven eight
Incredible Jerry Williams on the incredible WBZ from Incredible Cleveland Circle. And if you'd like to make comment, we have an hour to do so at 254-5678. Then uh, Steve Smith will be uh, pinch hitting for Larry Glick tonight. And I went through that before, and I'm not going to go through it again. Our phone number again is 254-5678. We begin. Hello. Hi. Yes. Uh, Jerry Williams? Yes, sir. Yes. Fine. Uh, my name is Jerry Coakley, and uh, I just... Uh, got finished listening to the wonderful victory by Boston College, you know, on uh, your station. And uh, what I would like to ask you is, uh, do you really believe in what you say about every 15 minutes about WBZ being the, uh, you know, whatever your slogan is there, the... the spirit of 103. Spirit of 103, mm-hmm. the voice of New England. Do we, what do you mean, do we really believe it? Do you really believe it, Jerry? In what sense? In what sense? Well, what I'm talking about is we have a basketball team here from New England. Yes. Right? Right. Who is going in the semifinals Thursday night against Army, right? Right. Who just, who just won a wonderful victory Right, and we, and we broadcast it. And you did. And if it wasn't for your radio station, I never would have known anything about it, you know? So you know, I would have had a... So I, we I are... Had a, I would have had to watch TV or something like that and, and to get the uh, late sports. I... I agree with you, Jerry. So we are the spirit of 103. All right. But are you really the spirit of 103? Because we got people down in Rhode Island, strong basketball fans. you got people here in Massachusetts. I can remember when Providence, when Providence went to the NIT. And yeah, what would you like WBZ to do? I would like WBZ, and I would like everybody that's listening to this program in New England to call your station to... Send postcards starting tonight and televise this game coming up Thursday night. If it's at all possible. If it isn't possible by you, Channel 2, which is an educational channel. <clears throat> is that correct? Well, I think that you're right about uh, some sort of television coverage for Thursday night. Let me tell you this. that WBZ Radio will be there. And if people would like to write to WBZ TV, I'm not sure or certain that it could be arranged in such a short period of time. But we certainly would appreciate the comments. Thank you very much, too. WBZ, the spirit of 103, as we continue. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering what you think if uh, Russia and China had an all-out war. Oh, I think that would be really swell. Yeah. I like wars, and I particularly like them when the Russians and the Chinese are... I think that's swell. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, you know, what had happened in Vietnam if that uh, happened. Well, that's another swell war. All wars are swell... And I appreciate your calling. You're swell, uh, too. One more thing. No more. Thank you very much. Two five four five six seven eight. When people ask me questions like that, um, dumb, dumb questions, they get dumb, dumb answers. And if anybody would like to ask a question like that, rather than put it on the air, why don't you write to dumb, dumb, WBZ, and we'll send that off to the dumb, dumb department. We have a special department that answers dumb, dumb letters, and we'll be happy to answer your letter. All right? It happens to be in my office, but... <laughs> Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Yes. Yes, this is Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Stan Cassidy in Wilmington. Well, how are uh, you, I was uh, yes, listening to your uh, program earlier here. Yes, well, right. I get some money in up. Sure. But uh, I wanted to uh, speak about the uh, pothole situation. You the pothole situation? Uh, well, you were talking about Cleveland Circle. Was I? And uh, incredible bit. Yeah. Oh, that bit. Oh, yeah. So long ago, I forgot it. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you'd realize that they can't do anything about the potholes now. Oh? I mean, because... Uh, Where do you live? Pardon me? Where do you live? In Wilmington. In Wilmington? Uh-huh. Do you know anything about Cleveland Circle? Oh, yes. I've been... I used to live down uh, up in Chestnut Hill. Oh, so you know about it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not just the potholes I'm talking about. You heard me talk about the traffic situation there, the angle parking there. The uh-huh. chaos there, generally speaking, well, the what bad... Would you, uh, uh, what would you suggest? Wipe out Cleveland Circle? Well, that might be not a bad... I think that's the best suggestion so far. How would you go about it? Well, we wipe it out. How? Uh-huh. Well, take a couple of steamrollers and just wipe it out. Yeah, big steamrollers. You get an eraser and you wipe out Cleveland Circle. Well, okay, forget about that then. Uh, the other thing, I wanted to congratulate BC on the game tonight. 
Well, good. It's certainly nice to talk to you. WBZ, the spirit of one. They're out there tonight. Hello. Hi there, sport fans. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. I would just like to talk about the uh, pothole situation. Oh, yes? I enjoy your program very much, and uh, I'm learning how to drive. You're learning how to drive? Yes, I am. And, uh, well, come into uh, Cleveland Circle. There's a, there's a wonderful, uh, what do they call those, road testing course there. If you have a new car, you want to test a car, it's the best way to test the, um, the equilibrium of yourself as a driver and the car's, um, what do they call that stuff? The axles and the uh, springs and all that stuff. That's a good place to try it. Well, my father uh, worked over B.C. and he had to reroute his whole route to work just because of the potholes there. It's, not, it's, it's not, really terrible. Listen, hey, it's not only the potholes. That's not the... the and uh, the traffic, also. Yeah, it's in a, a situation that's so... It's only um, uh, compounded by the potholes. Potholes usually get filled in. They, f they come along and throw some dirt in it, you know, some old tar. Well, and then all that old tar, when it's new, goes up into the into your car, see, and it hits exactly all your, right. Right, your nice new car wash. You just spent two and a half bucks getting your car wash, and you come along, and all this gravel is all over the dirty streets there. Yeah, we... we there's use. angle parking, there's an MTA car barn there, there's a Cleveland Circle Theater there, there's the, uh, 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 the uh, MDC uh, uh, rink, a uh, skating rink there, there's a, a little uh, a stationery store where everybody stops illegally to get the papers late at night, it's unbelievable! Well, we've got a pothole right now in front of our house, and it's at least two feet deep, and you should see some of the people stop. I'll bet it's, you they stop, it's, huh? It's almost, and we almost had an accident here oh. today. Caught on a pothole. Thanks very much for calling. 1115 WBZ, the spirit of 103. We're caught into this subject of potholes at Cleveland Circle. We're caught. Hello? Jerry Williams. Yes. I'm tired of seeing all these welfare mothers. Now they're protesting against the foster parents getting close. Who Reaper. asked you? Did well, anybody ask you? How about the taxpayers? Did anybody ask you for, whether you're look, protesting? Why not get the taxpayers go up and get clothing for our children for Easter? Go up to the state house. The state get your own protests going. You know, those mothers got problems enough without well, you how about black the fathers and mothers that are paying taxes having problems. You're always complaining. I'm always complaining always because complaining. you don't want to hear the truth. The truth about well, how what? how about us taxpayers going up to the state Go house ahead. and take our five or six children up there and we protest that we sure. want our taxes, Lord, so we can buy our Easter clothing for our children. Right. I mean, now, they're protesting against children that do not have parents. That do not have parents. Is that their fault? No, it isn't the child's fault. But it is the welfare mother and father's fault. Mm -hmm. The you... guys that take off from their wives and leave their children behind. Yeah, do you ever what feel... did they get to complain about? These women knew who they were going out to marry. Yeah, well, uh, listen. Hey, Julio. Yes, this is Julio. And hey. I'm sick and tired of hey, listening Julio. to all this malarkey. Hey, Julio. Julio. Let me ask you a question. You ever fooled around? Did I ever fool around? Yeah. Honest to goodness, true. Yeah, honest to goodness. While I was in the service, yes. Well, then what do you, how do you know how many when pregnant 18, women you left around the world? Old. But look at all these women on Channel 4. It's guys 4 like you. It's guys like you who fool around a lot, who leave these pregnant well, women, about, who go what? on welfare. It's your fault. How about the little foster parent child? The, the little foster parent child that does not have no mother or father, and I feel sympathetic towards them. Julio, so it's they all your fault. It's the male animal who creates all these problems. Male, what, about, what, what about the woman animal that creates the male animal and, and gets the instinct of the environment of the male see, well, we're to always, contribute? We're always picking so it on, isn't always a male... We're that, always picking on the welfare mothers, but the welfare fathers, they're no way to be seen. You see, they what, don't want to be involved. They don't want to be involved. Then why, why should like the you. welfare mothers that know... That know where the welfare fathers are, do not go to the courts, like Judge Adler has said, and come out with it and say with who the parents are to these children. Boy, what a moralist you are, huh? I'm willing to pay make my a... share of life, Listen, but I want my five children to have Easter clothes. Who do you confess your sins to? Pardon? Who do you confess your sins to? Who do I confess uh, to myself? To yourself? And to the good Lord above. Well, I don't even go to church, believe it or not. Well, do uh, you think that the welfare mothers should confess their sins to a judge? Pardon? You think the mothers should confess their sins to the judge? Well, they should confess when, they, when, they take, when they're stealing money out of the taxpayers. Actually stealing it. You know, they put people away for, to jail 
because they held a gun in their mm, hand. Yeah. What about these welfare people that are st actually stealing? And Jerry, if I want to get down to the nitty gritty and even name them, if I knew that I wouldn't be sued because I can prove a documentary, welfare mothers who are still living with their husbands that come home at night, welfare mothers well, who can't afford <clears throat> automobiles, if you have any, welfare mothers that couldn't but, afford to stay in a but, bar room. But, but here's what you do. If you, if you feel that you have must name names, write to Nitty Gritty WBZ, and we'll be happy to have you mention the names, all right? Whew. That's Julio the Bomb Tosser. That's his name. Julio the Bomb Tosser. He tosses bombs all the time. One of those bombs. All right, two five four five six seven eight is our number on WBZ at eleven twenty. The spirit of one zero three. Hello, hello, Jerry. Yes, that last guy was abuse. That's Julio the bomb tosser. Back to the potholes. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the potholes at Cleveland Circle. Cleveland Circle. It's unbelievable there, but those incredible, roads are, incredible is the word. Those roads I know have been that way for over ten years. I know, but that doesn't mean. I I know that. I think. At least I always thought that there was some kind of a jurisdictional dispute. There has to be more than a coincidence why both Commonwealth Ave and Beacon Street at those points are in such horrible shape. Now, down, when you go down Beacon a little more past Cleveland Circle, that's Brookline, not Boston. I always thought that Newton, Boston, and Brookline were having some kind of a dispute well, I don't over care what city should actually take care of those roads. I really don't care if they are having a dispute. Uh, that is that way, as you say, as long as I can remember that since 1957, it's been that way, compounded by a system of lights, right. which is incredible, compounded by angle parking. I mentioned the uh, Circle Theater, the MTA car barn, uh, the uh, traffic uh, uh, through Brookline into uh, Beacon Street, compounded by, by the MTA car lines, right. uh, compounded by what else? Let me see. And it's, it's, you know, that's only one spot, but it's indicative of a whole attitude around this area of we're not going to do anything because it's impossible. Well, that's what each of the cities is probably saying, that it's the other city's responsibility. It's horrible, though. I go to B.C. there now, and it's just unbelievable. Well, I um, was driving in this evening. I have uh, alternate routes from three... I, I can take one of three routes, depending on the time of the day. This evening, about 9 o'clock, I took the Southeast Expressway, get out into Ponset Circle, take the Southeast Expressway, and come up to Soldiers Field Road. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking along the Southeast Expressway, which is probably mo one of the most dangerous roads in the world, was obsolete the day it was built and opened, by the way, has no overhead lighting of any consequence. If there is any overhead lighting, they usually out, the lights are out, so you can't find out what's going on. I was thinking about that. I said, uh, listen, what are we going to do in 10 years from now? Hello? Hello? How are we going to handle that situation in 10 years? Now, we've, you've lived around here for 10 years. I've been here since 57 with an occasional vacation for three years, but now back, and I, I, I can't conceive of what the problems are going to be like in 1977. Um, uh, what is going to be on the Southeast Expressway? You can't get in. You can't go anywhere. They are making no plans to expand. I don't know of any expansion. What's going to happen to this city? I don't know who supposedly does the planning, but whoever does, they're incompetent. You ever try to get into the uh, uh, Callahan Tunnel? Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> That's another great spot, huh? And once you get in, you can't get out. Uh, the, you know, I can go on naming areas down in the financial district in Boston, you know, down in the area where all the high buildings are, right. Post Office Square. You know, there are no lights at all, no stop signs, and that is the only place in the world, outside of Calcutta, uh, that I've seen traffic control like that. And now all the mayors and all the uh, police people in the traffic commission are going to say, wait a minute, now it's an old city and we've got these old streets and narrow and blah, blah, and the same old excuses and the same old songs, and the city will die. And that's how cities die. Well, I'm glad we've, you've had a lot of calls anyway. Maybe someone will wake up. Okay, pothole. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, join the pothole party as we discuss potholes at 1123 on WBZ. Here's a very, very important number. University 4, 2900. It's a famous number. A lot of people know right off at Star Pharmacy. I don't even have to tell them. They're at 119 Hampshire Street, Cambridge. They do the job. A professional pharmacy. Listen, when you want shoes, where do you go? 
You go to a shoe store, right? When you want a suit, what do you do? You go to a suit store, right? When you want potholes, you go to a pothole store, City Hall. When you want drugs, prescriptions, and sick room supplies, you go to a professional pharmacy, Star Pharmacy. We do not carry shoes, discount supplies, things like that. We carry pharmaceutical supplies and invalid supplies and fill prescriptions accurately. That's what Star has been doing for years. Millions of prescriptions have been compounded by these professionals. They're open daily from 9 to 9. They deliver. University 42900 gets that delivery. Your doctor can phone in the prescription. What more do you want? Star Pharmacy 119, Hampshire Street in Cambridge. I'd appreciate it very much if you mentioned that Charlie Pothole sent you. Okay, let's continue on WBZ, the spirit of 103. Hello. Hello. We must have lost them. That must have been a long distance call and we lost them. 2545678, area code 617. Hello. Oh, we have trouble. We have trouble with the lines? Hello. Yes, Mr. Williams. Yes. Uh, good evening, yes. first of all. This is the first time I've ever called a radio talk show. And I'm reading uh, tonight about how the drug abuse uh, by teenagers is reaching an epidemic proportion. And uh, I hope there's somebody out there tonight who can hear me, because uh, I know what it's like to become reliant on such medication. In fact, uh, I'm getting what you call dried out now. I'm one of the lucky ones. What did you take? Uh, well, I had been taking a uh, prescriptions, but uh, even under a doctor's care, they can be abused. And uh, I guess it's just a weakness. Well, you took these uh, prescriptions under doctor's care mm -hmm. with doctor's knowledge, and as a result, became hooked, so to speak? Well, you might as well say that, but I guess it's just being weak to start off with in the beginning. Was it a dependency? Upon it was a great reliance on them after a, a while, yeah. and... Uh, what does a doctor uh, do at that point when he realizes that he's been prescribing drugs, and you become a reliant on the drug that he's been prescribing? What does well, do then that? we send the patient to the hospital, and we get him off this drug. Now, uh... It can't happen even under a doctor's care, I think, if people do not follow their doctor's instructions very carefully because the doctor is there and he knows exactly what he is prescribing for his patient. And uh, if you're going to be reckless about it and uh, miss pills or uh, take too many at one time, then you're just going to wind up in the slump. Well, there's no doubt in my mind about the danger of drugs, and a youngster who feels that he must smoke pot or go on from there to pills is fooling around with dangerous stuff, very dangerous stuff that could ruin their lives. Right. And I think at the point when you start, take the first cigarette even, mm -hmm. the first cigarette which could lead to cancer, mm -hmm. or the first uh, so-called drag on a, on a marijuana cigarette, you are beginning a problem. And I think uh, that sort of exploration is really absolutely unnecessary. Lots of things to expand your mind, lots of kicks to get in life outside of the drugs. True. Uh, let, how about a little light note? I was hearing today that uh, Harvard Square is going to be renamed to Piazza Lapricano. Oh, that's true. Italian Piazza Lapricano. Lepre wasn't that true? Right. And uh, I'm 50% Irish myself, and I have no objection to this. <laughs> okay, we'll surely get some calls on that. Thank you for calling in, too. 11.28 on WBZ, the spirit of 103. This is Jerry Williams here on the 10 to Midnight Ride. One of the real great places to dine in Boston is the Branding Iron. The Branding Iron at Charles River Park, one of Boston's most delightful restaurants. It certainly is Boston's most lavish steakhouse. The Romantic Gaslight Era, it's a gas. Steak, deliciously charcoal broiled. I like mine 
burnt on the outside and kind of pinkish on the inside. Tasty roast beef, baked stuffed lobster prepared and served exquisitely. Your Caesar salad is made right, on the, right at the table. As a matter of fact, if you want the waiter to be on the table, it'll be on the table. We don't care. And you'll like the kind of people that inhabit the Branding Iron. So if you haven't yet visited the Branding Iron in Charles River Park, please come. It'll be an unforgettable treat. WBZ and WBZ-FM, Group W Westinghouse Broadcasting in Boston. It's 11.30, and we continue until midnight. Steve Smith will then be with us uh, from uh, midnight on to substitute for Larry Glick, who substituted for... I get, well, I'll forget that. Uh, Glick won't be in tonight, but Stephen Smith will. Let's continue with the calls at 254-5678 after that great BC victory. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes, sir. This is Julian Ozer calling from Framingham. Yes, sir. You, when you mentioned Cleveland Circle, you hit a very tender spot, the Circle parking lot. I would like to know how is it allowed that you only go in and out one way. <laughs> you can only go in and you out? You can go in and you cannot come out unless there's a flow of traffic. It's a death trap. Which parking lot is the that? The Circle Theater behind it. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Tell me about it. I don't know how to get in there. That's worse than the road. I tried the other night right after the BZ basketball game with the Playboy Bunnies to go over to see Joanna. Right. I couldn't get in. Did you go in on the side of the theater. Oh, is that how? Yeah, on the opposite side of Howard Johnson. Oh, I wound up getting an ice cream cone. Well, that's much better. <laughs> Less calories, you know. Well, you know, that's... Uh, when we talk about Cleveland Circle, we are, again, only talking about a symptom of a great sickness in Boston, which is not a sickness in Los Angeles, not a sickness in Chicago... Not a sickness in New York, not a sickness in Washington, because they have some very rigid traffic control and regulation. No place like this but Calcutta, where there are cows in the street and they don't know any better. Well, with your pioneering, we'll improve it. We'll try. Thank very you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay, 254-5678. Hello. Yes? Yes, this is Pothole Center. Is this Jerry Williams? Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're not following on the radio. I'm the same fellow on the radio. Would, uh, you, would you believe that? Okay, fine. Well, I'm disturbed about the potholes, too. But I must say that I'm more disturbed about the fact that um, Marlboro Street, I live in downtown Boston, and Marlboro Street twice a week has a street cleaning. And for some reason, the city of Boston hasn't been able to plow the snow out. And... I have a car in which I have to use every day, and if you live in downtown Boston, you can only park overnight on one side of the street. You know what I mean? I do. And so you can't park on the right side of the street anymore because on Marlboro Street they've just failed to plow it. Sure. It's, yep. And it's in an impossible well, situation. Let me, let me uh, clue you. You're not the only street in town like that. Most of Boston streets are like that, particularly in neighborhoods. In residential areas, in Dorchester, in Roxbury, the Back Bay, you're just one of many. Yes, but why do we bother to put up with the um, street cleaning and, and remove our cars for the days and the half days that they do have street cleaning? Are they making passes at the street with a, with a street cleaner? Or yeah, are they, they making... make passes at it, exactly. You think they're just making passes? Just making passes at it. Well... Because there's no other way of doing it. Is there any way we can get on the city to get them to plow out some I, of this? I think that the city needs a whole new attitude toward this. I, I really mean stringent control and stringent regulation and stringent enforcement. Now, that doesn't mean that I want to fine everybody in the city. I just think that a whole new look must be taken at it because can you imagine what's going to be in five years? <laughs> I hate to think. <laughs> can you imagine? You know, the businessmen downtown are rather short-sighted because... They are always on the mayor's back to leave things as they are. Uh, don't change anything because it would hurt us this week in business. Oh, they, yeah. they take the short, dim view rather than the long view, which must be taken or, or Boston will become a dying city. Mm -hmm. It's pretty well dying, you know, in some se sections of the inner city. Yeah. Uh, have you ever traveled around the financial district? <laughs> I can't find my way around. <laughs> I'm afraid to say. It's incredible. That's oh, the way. I know. I know. It's I was down there tonight. No, it, it is terrible, but I think it's, it's a shame because I know I did at one point pay for parking on an alley slot, which was even worse because I never could get my car out of there. 
and now I try to park on the street, and I can't even find a place uh, to park. Well, if you'd like me to be the next traffic commissioner, will you write to the mayor, please, Mayor <laughs> Kevin White, and say we want Jerry Williams as traffic commissioner, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I could use will you a promise to do something? I promise. I, <laughs> okay. I promise. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe I will. Much. I know some people. Thank you very much. Two five four. I'm now bucking for traffic. I'll do it for nothing too. Don't want the money. I'm not interested in the money. Just interested in getting the job done. How does it sound like a politician speech? Getting the job done, folks. Twenty five minutes before midnight. WBC Radio. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. Uh, I like to talk about the uh, registry and. Uh, the uh, law they want to pass about taking the exam every four years or yes. whatever it is. That's a good idea, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Because I uh, I had lost my license and uh, I had to take the examination over again. But uh, what I'm like to know is, what I would like to know is, uh, I work in construction. I'm a cop in, uh, and, uh, and, uh, in uh, Boston. And there's an awful lot of, you know, immigrants there. And... Uh, they can't speak English, they can't read English, they can't write it, and they all have a driver's license. I'm unaware of that situation. I don't know what that situation is. And this is, this is what I would... So what would be the use of passing this law if these people can get a license? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure there are others who have some experience with it who might like to add to the discussion tonight. Thank you for calling about it. We'll try to get on to others who have a point of view on that. Thank you. Two five four five six seven eight. Hello. Hello. Next. Two five four five six seven eight. You must turn your radio off before we go on the air. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. I'm a Boston cab driver, and I found that rather interesting about the potholes. You're a See? Boston cab driver. Mm -hmm. Do you drive a bomber? Uh, no, I drive a very good one. I see. I don't like cab drivers who drive bombers. And I'm a very good. We driver. have the biggest fleet of bombers in America in Boston. Uh, well, you'll find some worse ones in South America. They have some, they have some cabs, they're 30 years old. I understand, but they don't hide the fact. No, they don't. In this city, we seem to try to hide the fact that we have these bad cabs. As a matter of fact, I'd like to say to one company, you have bad cab. Yeah, bad more, more cab. than one. And, huh? More than one company. And let me tell you... That is dangerous for the people who... I don't get into bad cabs. Yeah, but Jerry, you know... I don't even get in there. Come by me and say, get moving, buddy. Yeah. Next. You, you, know, you know why they're bombers? Because of the potholes in the city. Yeah. How can you keep a good car? Uh, well, the point, the point being that uh, the people who are in the taxi business are aware of that and should be further aware of that, and uh, they should pressure the city to do more about it rather than just ride me around a cab. I won't go in a cab like that. Yeah. Well, See you later. I can't blame you for that. You know what I wanted to mention, Jerry? Yes. I was in Montreal uh, the year before Expo. Yes. Uh, have you ever been there? No. Well, I, I stayed in a motel that was 20 miles out of the city, and I had to drive b back and forth every day. Yes. Out in Metropolitan Boulevard. Yes. And there are no streets with deeper potholes than Metropolitan Boulevard in Montreal. Now, get this. There's a railroad crossing that is used by trains, no lights, no sign, and the speed limit at the railroad crossing is 60. Imagine hitting that. Yeah, that would be an easy way to take off. It would. And you, I, stu you still driving around the city? Oh, yes. What are the difficult places besides my favorite Cleveland Circle? Well, I have to be honest with you. I think out of the whole city... Roxbury takes the prize. In terms of potholes? Right. What about just big traffic hang-ups? Oh, the whole city. Let's face <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, dear, I, it. It always reminds me of a story about a guy who was standing on um, Hanover Street in the North End. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got a stranger came over and said, Hey, um, this is a, oh, about five years ago when there was some all that building going on, you know, in Scully Square or whatever. Guy came over to this guy, he says, Hey, how do you get to the State House from here? He says, Well, you see that dome over there? He says, You just get up there on the ramp. Wait a minute, you can't go on that ramp now. Wait a minute, you go around, you go around here where the market, wait a minute, you can't go through there because that market, <laughs> let me see now. You go through the tunnel, no, you can't go yeah. through that tunnel. 
He said, well, you just can't get there. Now forget it. Yeah, that's possible. And you know, it's incredible. Mm. What's going to happen for the future of the city? This has one of been one of my kicks for some years, but it's the seriousness of the situation has been compounded by the snow, mm. compounded by the potholes. I, I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of abandoning cars completely. I wish it was the helicopter but, but, age. Uh, were they thinking about doing that downtown, in the downtown area at one time? Yes, they were. They should do it. I don't know what the answer is. You have no idea, huh? I get a kick out of, uh, and sometimes when, when someone hails me, they, they want to go, oh, let's say about two blocks, but I've got to go 12 blocks to get them there. Yep. Uh, usually I'll explain to them that they'll get there a lot faster. Just by walking. They walk. Yeah, yep. show them the way they walk. But it's, it's wicked, believe me. Well, it's good to talk to you, and I appreciate your calling. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. 20 minutes before midnight on WBZ. I'm sure you've heard about bus tours to points of interest, charted flights to exotic islands and romantic Caribbean cruises, but have you ever heard of one exciting trip that combines them all? It figured that we'd have to do something special for Glickniks, but Larry went overboard for his people. The result is the Glick trip on April the 11th and it combines the best of land, air, and sea travel. For five or eight days, you take your choice. Larry's your conductor on a zany bus trip from Boston to New York's Kennedy Airport. Then it's on to a Royal Dutch KLM airliner for your trip to Aruba in the sun-drenched Caribbean. And what's waiting for you in Aruba? Well, it's the SS Romantica, primed to you tour three Caribbean islands for four days of sun, ridiculously easy living in Glick. And then it's back to Aruba. And if you wish, your tour could end right there. And then it's back to Boston. Or you can stay on for three more days of glicknicking on the white sandy beaches and in the dazzling nightlight which has made Aruba one of the world's great vacation spots. Glick trips start from $295. For further information, call Crimson Travel. or uh, That's at 742-8500. Or write Glick Trip, care of Crimson Travel, to Center Plaza, Boston, 02108. Remember, Glick trips are more fun than anything. Let's continue with your calls and comments here on the 10 to Midnight Ride. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. You're talking about uh, potholes and maintenance of the streets. Uh, I'd like to tell you something uh, that I saw this morning. I was up Beacon Hill about 8 o'clock this morning. and uh, Where? Up Beacon Hill. Where? I think it was on Myrtle Street. Uh -huh. And uh, the sanitation truck was going down the street, and there were two fellows in back emptying the, uh, emptying the cans into the truck. And uh, one of them, I guess, slipped or something, and about half a dozen tin cans or so fell on the, on the floor and a few bits of trash. But he signaled for the truck to go on anyway, and they walked away. Well, there was this old fellow sta just standing on the corner. He, uh, I don't know what he was doing there. He was just an, an elderly guy. And he called af after one of them, uh, hey, uh, you dropped half of it. And there were about, like I say, about half a dozen tin cans or so in the middle of the street. And the sanitation fellow looked back and uh, sort of snickered to the other one. And he hollered back, uh, well, you picked them up. And they kept on going. And I was just wondering if this is, uh, I know it doesn't require all kinds of finesse to uh, handle this job. But I was wondering if this is a kind of attitude that permeates. I don't think it prevails necessarily. You meet all kinds of people. Some of them are that way. You know, those, most of those people who pick up the uh, uh, garbage and trash are uh, private contractors. And... Uh, that's the way it is. You know, you meet all kinds of people everywhere. Yeah, I guess uh, so. uh, And it is a poor attitude, and it does reflect on the city, uh, when it really should reflect on the couple of guys that did that, too. Right. Okay, good. Thanks for calling in about it, too. Thanks. 17 minutes before midnight on WBZ. This is Jerry Williams. Good evening. Hello. Yes? This is Jerry. Jerry? You bet. Hello. Hello. Jerry Williams? Yes. Well, uh, could I just... Uh, I, I was um, lived in Jamaica Plain six years ago, when they had held a meeting that telling us that they were going to, uh, for Route 95, they were going to take our house. Well, we've, wait, we've waited now, uh, going on <coughs> six years. In the meantime, they, uh, the assessors now are starting to come around to tell us uh, how much our house is worth. Well, they've agreed, when at that time, five or six years ago, I could have bought a house for 17000 a nice house. The same house today would cost me about 24000 Now they've informed us that they might give us $5,000 extra. Now the state and the government's going to pay this 5000 on account of the price going up on the property. 
that we couldn't buy a house for the money that they're going to give us. Well, now, uh, we're supposed to buy, get the money for this house, but we're going to pay a 7%, 7.5% if we buy a new house. We won't get the, uh, the $5,000 extra unless we buy a new house. And if they give us the money uh, that, that they're going to give us, uh, we'll have to pay about $10,000 more for the house that we could have bought six years ago for, for, for 17500 What do you think of that for a situation? Bad situation, you have been wrong. There's no doubt about it. But when you're dealing with the government in a good many instances, this is what happens. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say either. Of course, in the meantime, you'll get six years, six years older, too. <clears throat> That's right. And you pay more money, and you're not getting a fair shake. You are not uh, getting a fair shake. And if we buy, now I'm 65, 66 years old. Sure, yeah. And if I buy a house now, I'll have to pay uh, that kind of money for the house, and I have to pay a 7.5% mortgage. Let's all go to Florida, shall we? Yeah. It would be nice. It would. Very. Well, I appreciate you letting me know about it. Thank you very much. 11.45 on WBZ, the spirit of 103. Hello. Uh, yes. Yes. You're on the air. Oh. Yes, uh, Jerry, I'd like to call to uh, answer the fellow's question about immigrants getting licenses. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm an immigrant myself, and I know many immigrants who cannot speak English, and yet they uh, have licenses. Mm -hmm. See, there's a uh, You lot speak of... English and you read. I read also, sir. Yeah, all right. Right. And they, uh, a lot of them, uh, for example, like in uh, New Bedford, I believe, or Fall River, was it? They, um, they caught this uh, used car dealer, and uh, he w he used to sell a car along with a license with mm -hmm, it. Right. And how they got the license, I don't know. I believe some inspectors were involved. Some registry inspectors were involved in, in this, or someone who worked in the registry. I see. So maybe some hotsy totsy afoot somewhere. Yes. Well, I know some uh, fellows who did buy them around 240 hours. Well, when they come around for that inspection in a couple of years, what happens then? Well, I think it's all legal. I think, uh, for example, I know uh, this fellow, he said that his license was legal and was all registered in the registry and uh, everything like that. See, the thing what they do, I believe, is that, for example, you're five feet nine and have uh, brown eyes and brown hair. And I'm five feet nine have brown eyes and br brown hair, and you can go you take the license for me, and then hmm. I pay you for that. Sure, yeah. I believe that's the way that, that it is operated. I see. Well, I, I wasn't aware of that, but I appreciate the information. Thank you very much, too. Two five four five six seven eight on WBZ, the spirit of 103. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'd like to get in this road bandwagon again. Yes. Uh, my favorite topic is the Southeast Expressway. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a jolly good place to go. Yeah, you mentioned before there were no lights, and I'd like to point on a particular area. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, right near the Dorchester gas tank. Oh, that's a jolly good spot. Well, I don't know if you've ever driven home from BZ uh, on a foggy night in that area. Forget when no it. Lighting. I wouldn't even go near the place <laughs> on a foggy night. Are you kidding? Uh, it's just unbelievable out there. And uh, besides the fact that there is no lighting. It's a death trap. Well, it's definitely a death, uh, a death trap, and I think one of the reasons why is the lines in the road are practically ob obliterated, especially at this time of year with, sure, right. with the snow rotting. It. Right. And, uh, well, I, I go home very often around 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and I really have trouble in this area tremendously. It is a very bad stretch of highway. As a matter of fact, as a result of commuting to the south, you know, you can get real estate along Cohasset and Situate housing in the, that general area at a very, very moderate price in today's high-priced real estate market. You know why? No, no. You can't get there. <laughs> no, seriously speaking, you know, it is most important that these highways, like Route 95 and 93, which stretch out into all sorts of areas and now get fairly swiftly into the city of Boston, um, they uh, bring the price of real estate up because it then begins, brings you within 25 or 30 minutes of the city of Boston. But out that way, Situate, Hingham, Cohasset, Hull, you know the area I'm talking about. Yeah. It is impossible to get there. As a, as a matter of fact, it's impossible to come from Braintree. Any place, any way, any, any place past the Ponset Circle on the Southeast Expressway. Anybody who commutes there 
every single day of his life. Yeah, well, I, I is whacked to... out of his mind. <laughs> I come in from Quincy every morning, and it takes me uh, at rush hour well, about 45 minutes to an hour to get to downtown Boston. What for? Yeah, well, I, I've been thinking about this. What for? Uh, one, one suggestion I'd, I'd like to offer. Um, I spent a year in Hawaii, and they had a lot of problems on some of their highways down there with fog at night. And they, instead of having uh, painted lines, or besides the painted lines, they put very small... Uh, metal discs right in, they embedded it right into the, uh, the pavement. And these uh, discs would do two things. Number one, they would reflect the light off your headlights. They were also visible during the day. And also, if you drifted from one lane into another, it would sort of bump against your tires, not seriously to damage them, but to warn you you were shifting from one lane to another. Sure. And uh, when your headlights hit them, they really glow. And I would suggest, if possible, if something could be done, they should be put in the southeast, especially especially in that area, because those lines are practically useless, and especially in a foggy night. Well, I've just spent about three years in Chicago, and uh, let me not minimize the fact that Chicago has its traffic problems, like every other major city, but they're organized. Things move swiftly, and their freeways and expressways are well-lighted, so you're not afraid to go on them at any time. I mean, lighted all the way. Uh, this means that if I wanted to go out, you know, maybe nine to miles out, there are lights on it. Uh, here, right in the midst of the city, there are no lights, and that Dorchester gas tank area really is a death trap. And uh, uh, that's why you can buy real estate in situate and cohasset <laughs> at moderate prices. Oh, Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, thank Nine you. minutes to midnight on WBZ. If you're on the Southeast Expressway tonight, I want to wish you a lot of good luck. Hello. 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 You're on the air. Uh, Jerry Williams? Yes. Uh, a couple of years ago, three or four or five, I don't know what, you, you had a, a, a suit against a touring company or a city on touring cars? Yes, that was, that was many years ago, yes. Yeah, how, how did you ever make out Well, here's, that? here's what happened. That was in 1957. Yeah. My wife's car yeah. was towed from Boylston Street yeah. in front of Steuben's at the time. Yeah. And it was overtime parking. It wasn't parked you know, in that uh, four to six at the time. It was an overtime parking thing where meters there yeah. at that time. And so they towed the car away because of overtime parking. Yeah. When I got to the parking garage, I think it was the Bowden Suite garage, I got lip from the guy down there, and oh, it was a big mess. And I finally sued the city and the police yeah. for illegally trespassing upon my property. Yeah. And I, that thing went on for three years. Four years was in the courts. I think in 1962 it came up. And I, we had an, a, what do they call that, an auditor's hearing? And, yeah. yeah, hearing before the, the general trial. Yeah, yeah. And I was, in, I was told quietly and secretly by some people in the know in the court system to drop the case or else they'd make it tough for my wife. Are you listening to this? Yeah. As a matter of fact, when my wife went on the stand, one of the uh, uh, attorneys for the garage tried to imply some very ugly things about my wife. I didn't want to get my wife involved in this business of ugliness, and it really wasn't her issue, it was my issue. The car happened to be registered to her. And so I dropped the case at that point because I didn't want to get her involved. But I did sue the city, uh, and it took five years for it to come up to court, and then I was told very quietly to drop out, or else they would make it tough. Uh, and then about a year beyond that, the big scandal about who, who was towing cars for whom. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and that was the end of that, right? I just dropped the case. Well, there was, at, at, at that time, what wasn't there only about three garages involved? That's right. Well, but, uh, now, this, 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 this don't sound reasonable. Well, that's what it was then. Of course, times have changed, and uh, there's not, you know, several towing garages involved. Those things have changed since then. And I dropped the case because I just didn't think it was worth getting my wife involved. And in an altercation no, that no, no, had no, nothing no, to do no, with her. Wait a minute, wait a minute now. Yeah. How, 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 could, how, how could you involve your wife? Well, it was the car was registered in her name, you say. Yeah. So that she was involved, whether she liked it or not, and they started implying... Well, but, 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 well not, I, I, I still, still, still don't get the drift of the thing. Yeah, what I was trying to do was sue the city on the constitutional business of whether or not it was legal yeah. to tow my car from... Uh, not to, uh, uh, to tow my, take my property away from me by illegally entering it and seizing my property and taking it away. 
but, but when, how, I, when, how, the, when how, the car how, did not constitute an emergency situation. But how would this involve your wife? Well, the car was registered in her name, and I yeah. don't think well, I want to belabor that point. You, you, you just said now that they, they'd uh, bring out... I don't know. The attorneys were getting are starting to throw mud. And I didn't want to get involved with attorneys that throw mud or uh, uh, infer things. Uh, I just didn't want to get involved. So at that point, upon advice of counsel, I dropped the case. Thanks for calling. Five minutes to midnight on WBZ. I'm going over to Bob Lee's. Plenty of illegal parking around there. Don't you like it when you go to a restaurant, you park your car in downtown Boston, park the car, got a spot, so you can go off to some secluded rendezvous. And you know what the guy says? He wants the money in advance. I would like to poke those guys right smack in the kisser. They want, they have my car. My car's worth five, six thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, a hundred dollars. They want their money in advance. Whew, what a system. But listen, after you get a pineapple passion or a headhunter or a Mai Tai from Bob Lee's, you can forget it all. After one or two of those, you will poke that parking lot attendant in the mouth. Those guys are really vultures. I, I really have it in for those vultures downtown. Four bucks a day. Woo! Four bucks a day to park a, a hunk of steel. Just think of what you could do with four bucks. You could feed those welfare mothers. Huh? Nobody complains about that. Park the steel for four bucks. Well, listen. It's worth it if you're going to Bob Lee's. 20 Tyler Street. We had a lovely time over there the other night. Celebrating my mother and father's 51st anniversary, wedding anniversary. We had, um the barbecued stuff and my father only eats chicken chow mein but it's good we had war boar islander it really has hot stuff in it we it dances around it's served on a bed of rice you lie down on the bed of rice and they throw the food on you rub it all over wow an orgy of food woo hoo you really, I mean, and after it's all over, they throw coconut on your head, and it's great. Bob Lee's Islander, 20 Tyler Street in the heart of Boston's Chinatown. Have a party at Bob Lee's. He'll do all the planning. You have to do nothing except tell him how many people are coming. Bob Lee. All right, let's continue with the calls until midnight, then Stephen Smith takes over for Larry Glick tonight, who's off. Hello. Hello, Jerry. Yes. Well, I think they should make you the traffic commissioner with no pay. I will take the job. I think they should. And I, will, I And I will do something about it. I think you should be. And they should get that bomb tosser, that fellow there, the bomb tosser. Julio. Oh, is that who he is? Yes. I don't know. Well, they should put him in for the uh, public welfare, the commissioner well, of public welfare. He'd make a good welfare commissioner. And how? We'd have a lot of money saved on taxes. Between me and him? Between you and him. Right. And listen, I think you two would be a fine pair. Right, and when I, when I become mayor of East Boston, we're going to march through the Sumner Tunnel right to the City Hall. Oh, is that where he comes from? Right, East Boston. Oh, I thought he came from uh, South Boston. No, no, East Boston. Oh, well, I'm from the South Shore also, and uh, I did watch the uh, program on Channel 4. Yes. But uh, I think he had something there. Who? That bomb tosser. Oh, the bomb tosser. He's a pretty good bomb tosser. Where, wow. do you, where do you live on the South Shore? Quincy. In Quincy? Yes. How do you get to town? How do I get to town? Yeah. Well, I don't go into town. I have too many children to go into town. Oh, I, I have you, to you stay just, home. You just stay there, huh? Yeah, I stay home. Uh, how many children do you have? Seven. How many? Seven. Seven children? Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me your name is Mrs. Goose now. No. No. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, good. But I think that would be something. You, the traffic commissioner, and him, the traffic... Uh... I'll take the job. If somebody offers me the job, I will take it. Thank you for calling. That's about it for tonight. Traffic. Traffic. Mr. Mayor, it's incredible. 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 Cleveland Circle is a mess. 
but only a symptom of the disease and of the sickness. Mr. Police Commissioner, I'd be happy to cooperate. I think I could get cooperation from Commissioner McNamara. And I think I could get cooperation from the retail trade board and all those fat cats downtown. And I'd be delighted to take it for nothing and do it during my daytime hours, which will be free soon enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Larry Glick is off tonight. Stephen Smith will be pinch hitting. It'll be fun. Good night. Good luck. Good morning. Good night to you. The Jerry Williams Show, presented by WBZ. This program produced for radio by Jerry Wishnow. This is the spirit of New England, WBZ and WBZ-FM, Group W, Westinghouse Broadcasting in Boston. It's 38 degrees in Boston. Tonight's low will be in the 30s. I'm Streeter Stewart reporting the 12 o'clock WBZ News. United States troops are withdrawn for the night in preparation for a second day of a massive offensive, which may turn out to be the biggest operation of the Vietnam War. They were led in today's assault by a column of tanks five miles long into an area where 20,000 enemy troops are reportedly entrenched some 30 miles north.